Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to this algorithmic patterns course. In this section, we're going to continue with dynamic programming by solving our first dynamic programming leak code problem. The problem that we're going to be solving is this problem here, which can be found by filtering the leak code patterns list using dynamic programming as the filter or by just searching for the problem name on leak code. We're given an array of nums where each index represents a house and each value represents the amount of money contained within the house. And we're tasked with figuring out the maximum amount of money we can rob from these houses without alerting the police. The constraint is that if we rob two adjacent houses, an alarm system will be triggered alerting the police. So we can't rob houses that are situated right next to each other. There has to be at least one house in between any two houses that we decide to rob. Now at this point, you're probably wondering, how the heck is this a dynamic programming problem? So let's go ahead and get into that. So we're given an array and each index of the array is a house and each value is the amount of money contained within the house. We know that we can't rob adjacent houses. So that means that at any one position up until that point, emphasis on up until that point, we can only either take the money at the current position plus the money at the house two positions to the left, or we can just take the money at the house one position to the left. And this is how we would avoid adjacent houses or stealing from adjacent houses. And our goal is to get the maximum amount of money. So of course we want to choose the option that gives us the maximum amount of money. So at this point, it seems that we have an optimal substructure. That is, we should be able to generate a solution to the overall problem by solving all of the subproblems, which is up until each index of the array or up until each house, what is the maximum amount of money that we can rob? And we can use the maximum amount of money that we can rob at previous points to determine the maximum amount of money that we can rob at our current position. So that means that the maximum amount of money that we can get up until each point will depend on the maximum amount of money that we can get at each preceding point. So the maximum amount that we can get at the last index of the array is going to depend on the maximum that we can get at each preceding point. And as a result of this, the maximum that we can get at the last index is going to be the maximum that we can get overall. So we'd just be able to return the max up to the nth index or the last index of the array of size n. Now, if the optimal substructure still isn't clear to you just yet, just stick with me. It will become clear very soon. Okay, so that went a little bit fast. So let me go ahead and try to explain this from the perspective of a bottom-up approach. So with the bottom-up approach, if you remember from the last video, we need to have base cases. So here we'll have our base cases. And the base cases are what we're going to use to build up to the overall solution to the problem. So we're going to start with some base cases and we're going to build up to the solution. So let me just write out the indexes here. So we have zero, one, two, and three. And these are the indexes of this array. This is an array. And our base cases are going to be as follows. So at this first house, remember that we only consider the amount of money up until the point that we're at. So right now we're at index zero. So we're not gonna consider these houses. We're only gonna consider the maximum amount of money that we can get up until this point. And since there are no houses preceding this house, that means that the maximum amount of money we can get at this point is only $1. So at this point, we can only get $1. And that's one of our base cases. So both of these houses are gonna be base cases. And this is going to be our first base case here. And once we know the maximum amount of money that we can get up until this point, then we can move on to figuring out the maximum amount of money that we can steal up until this point. And now remember, we can't steal from adjacent houses. These two houses, zero, index zero and index one, these two houses are adjacent to one another. So we can't get $1 from this house and $2 from this house. We only can get the money from one or the other, because if we rob both, remember the alarm's going to be set. So in this case, we wanna take the maximum of the two. And actually these maximums that we're putting up here, they're actually going to be a separate array. So if we go ahead and just put 
some array brackets here and we'll say that this is our max array and we'll even throw in some indexes here so this would be index 0, 1, 2, and 3. At this point we need to get the max of these two correct so that means that we would have max and it's going to be the maximum between the amount that we can get at this house and this house. So at this house we can get one, so that's one dollar, and at this house we can get two dollars. So at this point, the maximum amount we can get is two dollars. So we would skip this house and get the money at this house and it would be two dollars. And these two values are our base cases. So we're going to use these two values that are in our max array to build up to the solution of our problem by solving individual subproblems. So for dynamic programming to be applicable, we need to have an optimal substructure, right? So we need to have common subproblems, that is. So what is our common subproblem going to look like? For every house after our two base cases, we're going to be solving the same problem. So the base cases are an exception because they're our base cases, right? So we're going to need our base cases to build up the rest of the solution. But anything following our base cases are all going to be the common subproblem that we're talking about when we're talking about an optimal substructure. So if this array were longer, anything appended would still be solved using the same subproblem. And what that subproblem is going to look like is actually in order to better visualize the subproblem, we need to actually give a name to this array. So this array here, we will just call nums. So this array is called nums. And by this array, I mean this array, the, the problem array. So we have a max array, or we have an array called max, and we have an array called nums. So our subproblem is going to look like this. Our subproblem is going to be max of nums i plus max i minus 2. So quickly, let me explain this here. So let's imagine for a second that we're at index two. So index two is our i. Index two of the nums array is where we're at. So if we're here, and remember, we need to know the maximum amount of money that we can steal up until this point. So of course, we're not considering this house. Up until this point, we need to know the maximum amount that we can get up until this point. So that includes these previous houses. And remember, we can't steal from adjacent houses, so we really only have two options here. We can either take this house and this house. We can either steal the money at this house and this house, which will equal $1 plus $3, which will equal $4. Or we can steal the money at just this house, which would only give us $2. So this one here, where we're stealing the money from this house and this house, that's this here. Because look, so this is the nums array, right? And then we're at position i in the nums array. So the value at this position is three, right? Three dollars can be stolen at this house at this position, which is the position we're at. So this plus the maximum amount we were able to get at this previous position, which is i minus two. So currently we're here, right? So index i minus two, would bring us here. And remember, we can take from this house and this house. So index i minus two would bring us here. And the maximum we can get, remember the maximum, this maximum array, the maximum we were able to get at this previous point was $1. So let me go ahead and make this expression more clear. So in this case, this resolves to three plus one, which is four. But we wanna compare the amount we can get if we rob from these two houses and this one. So we're going to get the maximum of robbing from these two houses and this one. So here's where we're going to put this one. And we're at position i. i minus 1 is this house. The maximum amount we can get at this house. And again, we have a maximum here. So we're going to be checking the maximum array. So here would be max i minus 1. So here, remember, we're, we're taking from the max array because we want to know the maximum amount that we were able to get up until this previous point. The only reason we're using 
numbs i at this point is because that's what we're trying to figure out here. We're trying to figure out the maximum amount that we can get up until this point. So we're using the amount of money we have in this house and we're either adding it to the maximum we were able to get two houses over or we're just going to take the max that we were able to get one house over this value. So whichever one's greater. So up until this point, which is greater? Is the value we were able to get at this house the greater or is the value that we're able to get at this house plus this house greater? So one plus three. So one plus three is four and the max we were able to get up until this point is only two. So of course the max that we can get at this point or up until this point is going to be four. So we're gonna skip the two. So up until this point, in order to get four, we would have to rob this house, skip this house, and then rob this house. And that's what this is saying. And then if we were to move I up one, we'd end up at this house and this is the last house. And we want to know the maximum that we can steal up until this point. And this is going to be the answer to the overall problem. Because at this point, we need to use the maximum at previous points to solve the maximum at this point. So we're going to use the same sub problem. So we're going to check if nums i, which is $1, plus maximum i minus two, so i minus two, the maximum here, which is $2, so one plus two is three, so we wanna know if this is greater than this, or if this is greater than this. So this resolves to three, right? So now the maximum at I minus one. So the maximum at this house, the maximum we were able to get up until this house was $4. And $4 is greater than $3. So the maximum that we can get up until this point is also $4. And in this case, this would be our answer. And in order to get to this point, we would need to rob this house, skip this house, rob this house, skip this house. Because remember, the reason we got this maximum is because we robbed the value from this house. We didn't take anything from this house. And you can see how each subproblem depends on the previous subproblems. For example, this one, the only reason we know that the maximum we can steal up until this point is four, is because we know the maximum that we can steal up until this point is four. And when we were at this point, we decided between, between taking the money from this house and this house, which would be three, or taking the maximum value up until this house. So solving this subproblem for every preceding house excluding our base cases will give us the answer to the overall problem once we reach the last index of the array. Okay, so in our dynamic directory, we're going to make a directory called house robber and we'll just change directory into house robber and then we'll just create a file called bottomup.py and we'll create our solution class and the name of the method that we're going to be writing the code for is going to be rob and it's going to take in an input array nums and we'll get the input array nums from the leak code problem example. And for starters, we'll just use this example here. And we can just insert that. So we're going to code up a dynamic programming bottom up approach to this problem. And for starters, we'll just check to see if the array exists. If not nums, we'll return zero. And if length of nums equals one, then we're just going to return array, not array, nums zero because if the length of the array is one, the maximum amount of money that we can steal is whatever's in that one house. And our DP array, we're going to set equal to an array that we initialize with none values with a size of the length of nums. And we need to set up our base cases to build upon for our bottom up solution. So we're going to set DP zero equal to nums zero because the maximum amount of money that we can get up until dp zero is just the money in the house at index zero so up until this point the maximum amount of money that we can get is just two dollars or whatever currency you're familiar with but yeah just the maximum amount we can get from this house is two up until this point index zero 
and then we'll do DP one and we're going to set that equal to the maximum of nums zero and nums one. And that's because we can't steal from adjacent houses. So num zero is two and nums one is seven, but we can't steal from both of them or the alarm will go off. So we only can steal from one. So we're going to steal from the one that has the most money. The maximum that we can get up until the point index one is going to be whichever house has more money, the first house or the second house or the house at index zero or the house at index one. And next, we're going to build up to our solution using a for loop for i in range. And we're going to start from two up until the length of nums. And we're starting from two because index zero and one are already accounted for here. And from two, we're going to build up to our solution using the base values at index zero and one. So we'll set dpi equal to the maximum of nums i plus dp i minus two, or just dp i minus one. So what does this mean here? So we know that we can't steal from adjacent houses. So if we are at index two here, where the value is nine, we can't steal from this house and this house. So up until this point, our only options are to steal from this house with the value nine and this house, or to just steal from this house alone. We want to know the maximum that we can steal up until this point. So what this is doing is comparing the two, like can we get more money if we add the maximum value that we can get up to this point plus the amount of money we can get up to this point, or will we get more money if we just take this house? Because remember, we can't take all three because we can't do adjacent houses. So we only can either do this plus this or just this alone. And that's what this is getting, the maximum between those two. And we're just going to do that until we build up until we get to the end of nums. And once we've built up our solution until the end of nums, we're just going to return the last value in DP because at that point, the last value in DP is going to be the maximum amount of money that we can steal throughout the entire nums array. So let's go ahead and save this. And we can just do python3 bottom up dot pi and the answer is 12. And if we check our example here, the expected output is 12 as well.